Today we're gonna take a closer look at all the Vienas the United States has to offer. Then we're gonna rank them based on their deliciousness, eatability, and really whatever else I want. These dags are weird, I'm talking like cream cheese and fish cake weird, so hope you guys are ready to glizz down. You guys already know this, but we're gonna use the classic tier list scale. We got S to D. S is the best, obviously, super. D is the worst, as in, I got a D in Spanish class, not good. Ah, the main red snapper. This is super interesting. So the star of the show here is the red doggo, right? That's what they call the actual red snapper, right? We're not talking about the fish, this is the dog. It snaps when you bite into it. This is a simple dog. And tell me this doesn't look like the emoji. Probably the most like cartoon hot dog looking hot dog we're gonna have all day. But I'll let you be the judge of that. The dogs themselves are actually made by a company called like W.A. Bean or something. So shout out to the Bean, to the Beans. Uh, the Bean Brothers. The Bean Brothers, the Brothers Bean. L.L. Bean. Right, so L.L. Bean is actually founded in Maine. W.A. Bean also founded in Maine. So I think the Bean Bros are onto something if they're related at all, which they're probably not, but that would be cool. Okay, okay, all right, okay. This is very much a no frills hot dog, right? The most exciting part of this dog is the bun, right? The top split like lobster roll. It kind of takes the cake and it's the reason why I like the way it looks and I like the way it tastes. It's gotta be C tier, nothing too special about it. C's average, man, that's fine though, you know? I was gonna take another bite, but we have like 19 hot dogs to eat, so. All right, here we have the Philly Combo. This could be one of the most peculiar dogs on the list here. Super old school, super old world. You got your regular standard white bread bun, your Frankfurter or Wiener or hot dog. This stuff here is amazing. The recipe's over like 100 years old, I think. It's called sweet pepper hash. Kind of like a sweet, slightly fermented vinegary um, slaw, if you will. Just like other parts of the world, fermented cabbage thing, kimchi, sauerkraut, you name it. This stuff's good, it's a little different. By the way, if you want the full recipe for this, I'm gonna have that over on Patreon for you. The reason this dog is so crazy though is because of this right here. See this crispy bit? That is fish cake. It's actually mostly potato and a little bit of cod, kind of pureed together with some spices and seasonings. Clearly it's what makes this dog, this Philly combo, so special and unique. And then of course, just some grain mustard here, which, you know, we love grain mustard. <laughs> Whoa, I was a little spooked about this one, to be honest with you. Who puts a fish cake on a hot dog, but it kind of works. <laughs> this one's a sleeper. I was not expecting me to like this one as much as I do. Oh, this is tough. This one's coming in at a B. Philly combo, B on the tier list. Yeah, I think, I think that serves it right. It's an interesting dog, that's for sure. We can't talk about American hot dogs without talking about chili dogs. There's probably between like eight to 10 different kinds of chili dogs in the country. And it would just be kind of like silly and crazy to do all of them. So I've chosen the three most popular ones, the ones that I also personally like the most. And we're gonna start with Detroit. The Detroit Coney Dog. No, this does not come from Coney Island. It comes from a Greek immigrant who came through and was at Coney Island, probably had a great time, and moved to Detroit, bringing with him his secret chili sauce. And I say chili sauce because it's not really like a classic chili. I mean, there could be a whole video about chili, right? It changes regionally in the United States. It's more of like a Greek ragu spiced meat sauce than like a classic American chili, right? There are no beans in this chili. Last summer, I went to Detroit and actually got to try one of these from the source, right? The the story is kind of crazy. I'll let you guys look that up on your own time. But there are two spots in Detroit that are very well known. There's American, and then right next door is Lafayette. There was like a family feud or something, a big falling out, and one of the guys ended up leaving American and opening up Lafayette uh, like back in the day, and, and now they're they're still next to each other. They're dirty, they're gross. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in Detroit has their favorite Coney spot. Another spot that we went to, probably the most memorable, was a place called Dooley's that was definitely off the beaten path, really close to this bridge connected. Connecting, uh, Canada to Michigan. We went there because like that was a spot that Anthony Bourdain went to and he said it was like, you know, his favorite in the city, but I'm not gonna front, man. They're all pretty similar. <laughs> so, slot me up, papa. Let's hit this. So we talked about the chili, then it's just yellow mustard and onions. Look, man, I wanna hate it, but I can't. Maybe that says a little bit about me. Yep, brought me right back to Michigan. Pure, pure Michigan. If I was hungry and I wanted a meal, I could probably eat like six of these because they're so soft. You can literally just like, which I think is part of the intrigue. You want to eat like more than one of these things when you're eating it. Okay, the Coney dog, an American classic. Flavors there. This is a B tier hot dog. The Skyline Chili Dog with our Skyline Chili. 
Just like with the Detroit Coney, this is a thinner, Greek-inspired spiced, almost meat sauce, not really a chili. I was fortunate or unfortunate enough, depending on who you ask, to go to Skyline Chili a couple of times in my life. So I might actually strategically drop some chili here for later. And try one of their ways, which is just like, literally dude, it's spaghetti with chili and like cheese on top. You can get like a three way, a five way, I think like a seven way. Probably not the best food to have on a road trip, which is when we ate it, but um, I digress. Let's try this thing. What's interesting about this is the cheese doesn't come melted. It's just kind of like cheddar cheese. And I'm sure like when it touches the hot sauce and the chili on the bottom, it melts a little bit. But yeah, dude, chili cheese dog. All right, quick and easy. If I'm having any type of dog with chili on it, hot take maybe, I don't think I need the cheese. It's already such a gut punch eating a chili dog. A little bit of mustard and some diced onion on top of that chili is really all I need. Nothing against Cincy. I went to a Reds game, I chilled in the city. It's a great place, went on a really cool beer tour, but unfortunately, man, I gotta give this one a D. This is a D tier hot dog. The Georgia Scrambled Dog. As you can see, it's a bit of a deconstructed wiener, which is a very interesting play, interesting take, definitely unique. I guess this got popular at a place called the Dingleberry Pharmacy in uh, Columbus, Georgia. No, no. <laughs> that is so fake, dude. It's not the Dingleberry, it's not the Dinglewood, Dinglewood. Uh, <laughs> the Dinglewood Pharmacy in Columbus, Georgia. Honestly, pretty dope name for a pharmacy. <laughs> All right, so essentially it's a chili dog with a chopped up wiener. Chili poured over the top. Of course, there's beans in this chili. Some cheddar cheese, diced onions, pretty little oyster crackers. I will say I love those. And some pickle chips to kind of wake things up, I guess. I think you go fork and knife for this. Better yet, spork. If there was a, any food in the world that was like designed to be eaten with a spork, it's probably the Dingleberry Classic. I'm gonna do my best to kind of get a chili, a dog, some crackers, want some cheese in there, maybe a picky. Yeah, the cheese is kind of melted and nice. Mm -hmm. Got that bright red hot dog, very similar to the main snapper. All right, this is kind of easy for me. Sorry, Georgia, I don't think this is quite really a hot dog at all. It's more like a hot dog salad. This is D tier. Sorry. I feel like I was a little harsh on the chili dogs, but in my opinion, there's really room for one, maybe two chili dogs, and that is the Detroit Coney Island dog. I do have a couple of shout outs though, because there were, like I said, eight to, I, I don't even know how many like chili dogs we got. So shout out the hot Texas wiener from New Jersey, which is weird. The Toledo Hungarian dog, the mini dog from Hudson Valley, slaw dogs from North Carolina, the hot wiener from Rhode Island. One shout out that we're not doing on here though is the half smoke from Washington. Washington, D.C., made famous by Ben's Chili Bowl, which I actually got to go to last summer. The reason I chose not to put it on the list is because it's pretty much a coney. It's a chili dog, but it's a half smoke because it's kind of like a beefier sausage. I think it's half pork, half beef, and it's been smoked. So it's kind of grainier. It's not really quite that wiener, that frank, that hot dog we're looking for, but honorable mensch and shout out to the half smoke in Washington, D.C. Chili section complete. Let's get on to our fry, guys. All right, the corn dog, popularized at American state fairs, probably. I'm not actually sure on this. I don't think anyone actually really knows where the corn dog came from. But I gotta say, hot dogs already a pretty convenient thing to eat. The corn dog takes it up a level and makes it maybe one of the most portable foods ever. I think it's weird if you eat a corn dog stationary. I might have to do a couple of laps or something as I'm eating this. Also like corn wand corn sword, like a hot dog with a handle on it. Like it's just so, just. It's like biting into a piece of America right there. You got that grit from the cornmeal. It's slightly sweet. I usually like, you know, 95% of the time don't like ketchup on a hot dog, but on a corn dog, the ketchup works. That's an A tier. Mm, that's a 10. Speaking of handheld and portability, we gotta talk about the bagel dog. It's exactly what it sounds like. I made bagel dough, I wrapped it in a hot, I wrapped, I wrapped a hot dog around the dough. <laughs> what the f um, I made bagel dough. I wrapped a hot dog in said bagel dough. 
Then I let it proof. Then I boiled it in some malted water with a little bit of baking soda to make that bagel. Baked it off and here we are. A lovely bagel stick with a surprise inside. I remember crushing my body weight's worth of bagel dogs when I was a little kid, like at a sleepover. It was like the best thing. Except they didn't ever look like this. They looked like these tiny little uh, microwave oven whatever bagel dogs. Man, I love those. A homemade bagel does hit different though. Look at that, chewy, gummy. Put some cream cheese on there, I'm sure that would be really good too. More on that later. It's just a little bready. That's the only beef that I have though, because otherwise it's just really, really good. B tier. Hailing from Newark, New Jersey, I present the Italian hot dog. And it's called the Italian hot dog because basically an Italian guy moved to Newark, would invite his friends over for cards, and his wife would whip these up. And eventually his friends stopped coming over for cards but continued to come over for the Italian hot dog. So they opened up business and here we are. It starts with pizza bread. This is just a, my New York style dough that I kind of like curled up into a ball like this and almost like bageletized but didn't open the hole. You go over to the spots in Newark, the signature thing is there's a little hole in the middle so it's kind of going for that. Two all beef uh, hot dogs in Newark, they use best provision hot dogs. Peppers and onions, some green bell pepper, some red bell pepper. Now these are basically almost like deep fried, which is why we deep fried them. There's basically these, these big flat tops like filled with oil and they're sitting there and they're essentially kind of like blanching in oil, right? Just like these potatoes, you can notice there's not a lot of color on these. They're not french fries, they're not crispy, right? They're just kind of like cooked through and seasoned with salt. On the bottom you got your grain mustard, on the top you got your tomato. So almost like a hot dog pita. Hmm. Thoughts on the jabroni. It's another name for the sandwich, I guess. I love the idea, but the ketchup, man, just kind of ruins it for me. It's too sweet. I would have loved to have seen like hot peppers, like a, some jardinera or like banana peppers or like anything that's like slightly spicy, pickled, crunchy. Man, a little just disappointed in that. I, I would say all in all, this is a B tier hot dog. The New Jersey Ripper. Made famous by a place called Rutz Hut in New Jersey. It's a simple bun, deep fried hot dogs, and a special secret relish sauce on it. I think it's like a 90 year old recipe or something. Is this the exact recipe? Obviously not because it's a secret recipe, but you know, I did my best to make it look a lot like it. And you know, it's pretty balanced. It's sweet, it's tangy, it's acidic. I like it. You can order this two ways. Here we have the in and out as it's called, which is simply just a hot dog that's kind of almost like just quickly blanched in oil until it's kind of crispy. Then we have what they call the cremator, just basically cooked to sh Right? Crispy meat tube. I'm gonna start with this one because it seems more interesting. Hmm. Let's try the less fried one. See what we're working with here. Okay. Less crispy and crunchy. I would be a cremator guy probably. This is a no frills hot dog. It is a novel technique for me too. I mean, personally, I never grew up on deep fried hot dogs. I think it's cool. It's almost like crunchy in a way because of that natural casing, it just crisps up. The ripper, man. New Jersey, you have been absolved. A tier. The Seattle Doggo. The first thing you'll probably notice is that this is no ordinary bun. This is actually a Bialy stick. I actually made this Bialy stick because I don't really know where to get Bialy stick, so just kind of whipped it together. The reason I did that is because legend has it that this dog was started by a bagel maker in Seattle back in the 90s. Wanted to make a late night food, you know, after the bar, after they go out and see like, you know, Nirvana, Soundgarden, all those grunge bands of the 90s. He wanted to like give basically people a drunk food. And he's like, I don't wanna just be a hot dog guy, I wanna be like a bagel guy. So he made Bialy sticks, swiped some cream cheese in there, popped the dog in, and there we have the Seattle Doggo. I chose to use a whipped cream cheese because the cream cheese needs to be cold. If you use a room temperature tempered cream cheese, swipe it in, things are just gonna melt, the dog's gonna slide around, it's gonna be tough, you're gonna have a bad time. And some uh, caramelized onions, a little bit of uh, grilled jalapenos, and uh, the cream cheese on a Bialy roll. Cheers. Mm. This excites me. This hot dog is a thing of beauty, man. This is up there. This is a powerful dog. Matter of fact, so powerful. I think we're about to give out our first S tier of the day, baby. The Seattle Dog S tier. You gotta try this thing. All right, the Alaskan Reindeer Dog. Ain't she pretty? She is a nice looking hot dog right here. So, reindeer. I just learned this actually, is the same thing as caribou. So reindeer, caribou. So caribou dog, reindeer dog, whatever. You can see the cream cheese layer, very similar to our Seattle dog, whipped cream cheese, a caribou hot dog, yellow mustard, and Coca-Cola onions, which are just onions that have been deglazed with some Coke. Anyways, I would crush one of these in the Alaskan winter, watching dogs race and chopping down trees and dodging moose or whatever people in Alaska do. Hmm. 
Wow, that is certainly different than the other hot dogs that we've had. A little gamier, different spices, but good. The Coke onions are tight. They're really good. They're semi-sweet and very savory and yummy. Um, I thought I would like the mustard combination with the cream cheese more than I did. Solid hot dog, gonna have to get a B. Tucson, Arizona's Sonoran Dog. We got a bolio roll, which is just a really soft, tender Mexican bread. Bacon wrapped dog, frijoles, a little cooked onion, a little raw onion, diced tomato, jalapeno, yellow mustard, and mayonnaise. Did I forget anything? We're good. Now, I actually had the pleasure of having one of these from a spot that's a really pretty well-known famous Sonoran dog spot called El Guero Canelo. And it was amazing. It came with a charred jalapeno, a bunch of other condiments. It was super pretty and very satisfying and actually really, really good. So, looks a little interesting there. If you squint, what is this, like the all-seeing eye, dude? I can see your feet, your dog. Oh, man. Hot diggity! I love this hot dog, man. Ooh. Mmm. Le Spice. Pork and beans, classic. Then you have your creamy mayonnaise, which goes really, really nicely with the really spicy uh, green jalapeno salsa. Then you have two types of onions, which I think is a nice touch. And then your cooling diced tomatoes in there. And check that out. Look at the anatomy of a Sonoran dog. But. The thing that really sets this one apart, in my opinion, is the bun. This bolillo roll, bo bo bolillo, bolillo. <laughs> These rolls are also used to make tortas, so they're just like prime sandwich rolls. Look how squishy and soft that is. I mean, you can't, that squish factor don't lie. There's a reason why these are super popular where they come from and elsewhere. With all that said, I think we have ourselves S tier number two. The Sonoran dog, baby. Super Sonoran. Love it. This is my 10th hot dog of the day, and I'm taking a second bite, you know it's good. Mm -hmm or just that I have a problem. All right, we have entered our big city dog category, starting with the LA dog, or better known as maybe the LA danger dog. Chances are if you've had one of these things, it's past 2 a.m., maybe after a concert or after a going out or something, and you just see these, these street vendors posted up with these little like butane burners fitted with a sheet tray on top, just whipping up dogs. Bacon wrapped, green pepper, red pepper, jalapeno, different sauces. I popped ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise on this to kind of represent the fact that every vendor's a little different. There might be some special sauces, obviously not on this dog, like an avocado crema or like a sriracha mayo or something like that. But this is pretty much the idea, right? It's called a danger dog because you have no idea how long these dogs have been sitting out on the street because these vendors, they're not licensed. They're just trying to make a quick buck. Mm-hmm. Solid. When compared to the Sonoran with that special bun and all that other stuff on it, this just kind of like falls flat in my opinion. Again, it's good, it's standard, it's a hot dog with stuff on it. The later it is at night, the better it's gonna taste. LA Danger Dog, it's a B. New York. Big city number two, New York City, the Dirty Water Hot Dog. They call it that because, look at that. I mean, that looks like dirty water, but it's actually not. It's just a spiced and seasoned water, which is actually a really good idea and a lot better of an idea than boiling hot dogs in plain water. You know, season the water and make the hot dogs taste good. So what do we got? We got a plain bun here. Beef frank underneath, yellow mustard, plain sauerkraut. And this, this is what sets this hot dog apart, makes it special. It's the tomato onion dressing or just basically saucy tomato-y onions um, with a couple different spices in them. Very, very common uh, with New York City hot dog stand vendors. So. Okay, it's interesting. The saucy oniony tomatoes kind of almost remind me of ketchup in a way. A little tangy, a little sweet because of the onions. Sauerkraut's pretty good. Yellow mustard standard, plain bun, regular hot dog. Kind of not the most exciting dog. Personally, I think sauerkraut should be reserved for like a heartier sausage, like a worst or like a, like a Polish or something with a little more like grit to it. That's just one man's opinion. New York, you do a lot of things right. Your pizza is goaded. Your dining scene's incredible. I love New York City. This ain't it. C. Last but not least of the big city dogs, the Chicago Dog. First off, we got a poppy seed bun. This is an S. Rosen's bun. Any white bread bun with poppy seeds will do. Then we have our tomato slices, fresh. The neon green scary looking relish, AKA Hulk snot. Our tangy little bursts of spicy hot pepper, our sport peppers. Big ol' slice of dill pickle. White onion, yellow mustard. Under the mustard, of course, our Vienna beef natural casing dog. It's gonna give you that snap. It's almost like you're biting into an apple, but it's a hot dog. <laughs> and then of course, in my opinion, what is really 
probably the most nostalgic aroma of this whole thing is the celery salt. That's a Chicago hot dog. Kind of a lot going on here, but it's the classic. And most notably, no ketchup. If you're old enough to pay taxes, you should not have ketchup anywhere near your hot dog. Be an adult. Cheers. Hmm. I mean, here's the thing. People who hate on the Chicago dog will say that, why can't I put ketchup on it if you're literally putting an entire salad on top of your hot dog? I think that's a really funny take, number one. Number two, the reason an entire salad is on the hot dog is why it's so good. It's balanced, it doesn't need that ketchup. Ketchup would throw things off. I mean, you already got tomatoes on there, right? Your fresh tomatoes, your sweet neon green relish. If you put ketchup on that, the sweet relish, it would be too much, in my opinion. You have your spice and your pickly brine from the peppers, puckering sourness from the yellow mustard, vegetal crunch from the onions, very savory, more crunch from that pickle, a little more sour too. And then of course, it's all on top of this snappy, delicious, salty Vienna beef hot dog in a really soft, supple bun with poppy seeds. That celery salt, it's just, Yo, <laughs> my glizzy just gleeked everywhere. It's a glizzy gleek. Oh my God. That's a hell of a last bite. Hell of a way to send it off. Dude, on that note, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you already know my love for this thing. This is an S tier hot dog. Hands down, no question. All right, we made our list. I'm gonna flash it on screen now. Pretty confident with the list that we got here. I think the Skyline Dog and the Wiener Salad Georgia messed up situation kind of do deserve that bottom level. Moving up the way, it's C tier, the New York City Dog and the Main Red Snapper, seems about right. B tier, the Philly Combo, the Bagel Dog, the Coney and the Newark Italian Dog. That, that seems appropriate, I, I like that B tier. That's a strong B tier. Okay, A tier, we gotta talk about A tier. We got our Corn Dog, that's for sure an A tier. The Jersey Ripper. I think I'm gonna have to back pedal a little bit here. You know, we've been making these dogs for about three hours. Um, I had a bit of a haze. I think the, the Jersey Devil might have uh, possessed me. I, I don't think that deserves A tier. I'm gonna actually have to move the Jersey Ripper down to a C tier, which I know is a little intense from A to C, but again, I don't really know what I was thinking. Um, and I think the Ripper, it was, it was a hot dog. It was just a normal hot dog with good relish. I wouldn't be excited about it if I were to probably get it but I also wouldn't be like bummed about it. It's average, it's a C. Which leaves us to the S, the super, the best hot dogs in the game. We got the Seattle dog, that cream cheese, the spicy jalapeno, the caramelized onions on that Bialy roll, so good. The Sonoran dog on that super soft bun packed with all those fresh vegetables inside. The mayonnaise, the mustard, the spicy jalapenos. And then of course, the Chicago dog, right? The salad on a hot dog bun. So good, so balanced, so refreshing. You're eating a piece of like super salty tubular meat at the end of the day. So biting into those like fresh vegetables, that crunch, that spice, that acidity, it's just nice. That's pretty much that. We did it. We, we tier listed 14, a lot of hot dogs. It's literally been, it's been six hours. <laughs> It's been six hours, Jesus Christ. And that's all she wrote. If you like the video, like the video. If you're new to the chan, subscribe to the chan, join the party. If you're not new to the chan, I give you a pound, I pound you. I, I, I shake your hand. I wanna shake your hand. Come say what up in Discord. We're having some great conversation over there. We can talk all about hot dogs, pizza. We can talk all about your favorite color, whatever you want, come into the Discord. The best and easiest way to support us is over on Patreon. You get a whole bunch of exclusive recipes like the pepper hash recipe, exclusive giveaways, all that good stuff. It's literally only five bones a month, so we would appreciate you. But if not, that's fine too. And uh, I think that's all I got for you. So yeah, until next time. I need to go to sleep, but I have to go to a dinner.